Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chapter Two: Zhuangzi and Self-Cultivation. So, the major objective of this chapter is to understand the moral character of Zhuangzi. Second, to understand the self-cultivation is a premise of becoming a Zhuangzi. So, in first chapter, we have talked about the eight steps. So starting from the investigation things, then extend your knowledge to the utmost, and then you have to keep your mind or thought sincere and rectification or correction of your heart, and then come to the self cultivation. So, after cultivation, develop into like regulating your family and governor state and manifesting your virtue. Of the land, so from these eight steps, self-cultivation is a turning point. It's from the inward examination to the outward expressions or demonstrations. So there's a sentence from the Great Learning. It says, "From son of heaven, that means ruler, down to the common people, everyone should take self-cultivation." As the root, there is never a case when the root is in disorder, and yet the branches are in order. So you see that from the ruler to the common people, everyone should take this self-cultivation as the root. Let's come back to this Zhuangzi. Zhuangzi, when it translated into English, it can be a gentleman. A profound man, a perfect man, or a man of virtue. 况且，一个人要真正的为人师表，仅有知识学问不行，还需要有完美的人格。哦，完美的人格，应该如何理解？温良恭俭让，忠贞仁义孝悌，简言之，也就是君子之德。如何才能拥有这样的美德？诗书礼乐可以帮助人们获得良好的品性，但是必须学以致用，也就是说，学习知识与学习做人，二者不可分割。So in order to have this Chinese characteristic, we prefer to use 君子 So. When we go back to the origin of the Zhuangzi, of course, it was widely used in the pre-Qin period, and starting from the Confucius himself, he regarded Zhuangzi as a man of virtue. But before that, in the sense of the class, Zhuangzi refers, to, I mean, to the ruler or the descendants of the ruler. And then later, it means the man with virtue. It's starting from the Confucius himself. He thinks that the status, the social status, is irrelevant to the quality of the genes. Everybody, as long as he possesses the quality of such a man of virtue, and he can be entitled with. This genes. So, there are some early record of this genes. The term, let's. It appeared in the book of the change, the book of poetry, and the book of the documents or the history. Let's look at these three sentences. So, in the book of change, it says, "In the third nine, the superior man, active." And vigilant, and all day and in the evening, still careful and ap ap apprehensive. So the position is dangerous, but there will be no mistake. So you see that for a superior man, that means Zhuangzi, through day and night, he is uh, very diligent, very active, and very cautious about everything he's doing. And of course, this sentence is very famous. Um, 窈窕淑女，君子好逑 from the book of the poetry. So it says, 窈窕淑女 Sometimes we say just a fair lady. So 
a modest and a retiring and virtuous young lady. So for our prince, a good maid she. And then in the book of the document, the superior men were kept by him in obscurity and the mean men filled the offices. So, so these are some early records of this term, Junzi. And in Confucius' view, Junzi is the ideal moral character of human beings. When it comes to the virtue of Junzi, in early Confucian teaching, it mainly refers to the three virtues, that is, the humaneness, the wisdom, and the courage. Especially the first two, the humaneness and wisdom, they are like two swings. They support each other. And then courage. And starting from Mencius, he adds some more virtues, like the righteousness and propriety, and later trustworthiness. So now we come to a very common uh, term, these five virtues or five constant virtues we, we call it the humaneness, righteousness, and uh, propriety, wisdom, and trustworthy. So let's come back to the, the, the early Confucian teaching when he was talking, uh, uh, talking about this, uh, the three virtues. He was saying that no worry, no perplexity, and no fear. So which means that if a man with a humaneness, he shouldn't have the worry and he shouldn't have the perplexity and shouldn't be fearful. So let's look at the original sentence. It says, the master said, there are three things in the way of dreams. I'm not able to succeed in following. A man with humaneness is free from worries a man with wisdom is free from perplexity, and a man with courage be free from fear. So these three virtues. And also, to continue, he must try to explain why. Because he was thinking that if you can you examine within, there's nothing for you to worry, to fear. Let's look at this sentence. The master said, if on examining himself, a man finds nothing to reapproach himself for. What worries and fears can be have? So this is about the virtue of uh, of Junzi. Okay, now let's look at the Junzi's disposition and his feelings and concerns and cares for people and for the society as a whole. 流动的河水中含蕴着君子立身处世之道水流陛下好大无尽而不回返又似有道清澈透亮万物与水中都能洗去污秽洁净自身又似善于教化河水有如此之多的美德不正是君子立身处世之道吗 And what he worries most is a declining practice of the way And there is a sentence the master said, Junzi seeks away more than food, and one who plows may be found hungry, and one who learns may be rewarded with emolument. But what Junzi worries about is not the poverty, but the declining practice of the way. You see that? The chances are that those who work in the field may be hungry sometimes, and those who learn may be rewarded with a salary. So these are our professions. This is something we make a living. However, the Junzi thinks more about that, about the way, 
about, about prevailing of the humanness of the society. And he believes that self-cultivation is the root, is the most important of his life and also his service in the administration. Only by doing so can he bring peace and uh, happiness to others and also bring the order to the society. So let's look at this sentence. There's uh, three levels of developing his own character and also his own big contribution to the world. Zi Lu asked about Junzi. The master said he should cultivate himself with reverence. Is that all? Asked Zi Lu. The master said he should cultivate himself to bring peace to others. Is that all? Zi Lu again asked. The master said he should cultivate himself to bring peace to his people, which even Yao and Shun found it difficult to accomplish. So you see that this is three levels, starting from cultivating himself, of course, with reverence, and then bring peace or happiness to others. Here, in that time, means people in the high positions, high officials, and then Next, will bring the peace and security to the people. So this is Jun's disposition and his feelings and his concerns for the people. And how about the famous the three happy things for him? And even through this saying, we can have the sense of how big mind and how kind of dispositions he had. So talking about the three things, he was thinking about his parents and the brothers. And he's facing the heaven and earth, and he's thinking about anything that he should be ashamed of. And then last, he was thinking about the people. If he has a chance, he will educate them. He will share with them the goodness, the humaneness, and all those good virtues. So look at the original sentence about these three happy things. There are three happy things that Junzi finds delightful, though ruling over the land is not among them. The first delight is that his father and mother are both alive, and his brothers and sisters are safe and sound. The second is that when in front of heaven, he has nothing to be ashamed of. When in front of people, he has nothing to feel guilty about. The third is that he can enroll the most eminent talents in the land and educate them. So in order to achieve, attain this such happiness, he should have the three things to hold in all. The decree of heaven, then the great man and the word of a sage, the three saints. The master said, there are three things that Junzi holds in all. The decree of heaven, the great man and the words of the sage. The petty man, on the other hand, not knowing the decree of heaven, does not stand in awe of it. He despises the great man and mocks the words of the sage. So this is a, a, a big contrast between the Junzi and the Ming or the petty man. So in front of the heaven, uh, which means that Junzi have a clear awareness about the cause and effect in this, in this case. Whenever he develops the great part of him, as a result, he will contribute more to the society. So, in front of heaven, he always reminds him that, okay, what heaven imparts to man is called the human nature. And to follow the human nature is a way. Even though we, everybody is endowed this nature from the heaven, we need to cherish it. We need always keep a clear mind about how we can discover and rediscover this great part. 
of ourselves. In the process of learning and uh, dealing with others, and what should Junzi do? So he always keep a kind of a solemn and awe-inspiring attitude towards things. Because if he's not serious or grave, he will not inspire all. Even if he learns what he has learned, it's not solid. OK, so and then what are some principles of Junzi when in dealing with others? And he emphasized that you should be serious or grave. Otherwise, you will not inspire all. That's interesting. That means being grave, being serious, you're attentive, you're serious about doing everything. And you have this commitment. And you have this promise. And you do painstakingly. And as a result, you will gain the reverence. So let's look at the original sentence. The master said, if Jinzi is not serious or grave, he will not inspire all. Even if he learns, what he has learned is not solid. He should take loyalty and trustworthiness as his first principle and make no friends with those whose belief is contrary to his. When he makes mistakes, he does not fear to admit and correct them. So three things. Dreams should be grave. And the second, in dealing with a friend, he should take the loyalty and the trustworthiness as a principle. And also, he make no friend to those whose idea is contrary and whose belief is contrary to him. And when he recognized he made mistakes, he will not fear to admit and correct them. The master said, Jinzi seeks for fault within himself, while the pet man seeks in others. So, talking about the, the mistakes, talking about exam within, and he always have this principle, three things to guard against, so that he always keep an alert and cautious about his behavior, and always can have this examination on this principle. The master said, there are three things Junzi should guard against. In youth, when his energy is still yet fully gathered, he should guard against lust. In the prime of life, when his energy is in full vigor, he should guard against strife. And in old age, when his energy is getting weak, he should guard against acquisitiveness, in another word, greed. And of course, another principle is a righteous and propriety. So this is a very important uh, principle as well. He practiced things on the basis of these two principles. Like what he said, if Junzi learn extensively and regulate his behavior with the rights, he's sure not to let astray from the way. And also another sentence, if Junzi take righteous as his basic stuff, practice it in accordance with the propriety or the right, express it with modest and accomplished with Sincerity, such is Junzi indeed. So Junzi understands things based on the righteous, while the pet man based on what is profitable. Yo.
要成为一个高尚的君子，必须要有学问。先要学会进退之礼，常奏之乐，射箭、驾车、书写、数算，然后学习诗、书、礼、乐、春秋这些典籍。精通这些典籍非常困难，不过只要你诚心去学，就会有所收获。学诗可以使人温柔敦厚，学书使人疏通之远，学礼使人恭俭庄敬，学乐使人广博益良，学春秋则明该做什么，不该做什么。仅有学问不够，还要有美好的品德。小人无德，将危害他人。君子无德，将危害国家；执政者无德，将危害天下。因为这些害人之人、害国之人、害天下之人越来越多，才使得今日之天下礼崩乐坏、战乱不止。孔丘，你不仅仅学习典籍、学问，还要学习做人的道理呀、啊。Then. How about his word and action? He always tried to make his word correspondent to action and actions correspondent to the word. Slow in speech and quick, prompt in actions. And Junzi is ashamed of talking more, but acting less. Junzi is judged wise or foolish by one word. Therefore, he should be careful about his speech. So finally, let's look at Junzi. Wow, the Junzi is a man of virtue. He developed, he established the great part of his body. He tried to abide by the the the, the highest richness, the highest goodness, as we mentioned in the chapter chapter one. But in the Confucius teaching, Junzi should also Bear some literary attributes. That means literary、uh, talents. And talking about these two, Wen Zhi Bing Bing, we have a famous uh, uh, idiom here. And Wen is a refinement, and Zhi is basic original、uh, quality or substance. So we should find a balance between the ba these two, and then make the dreams. The master said, "It is uncivil when one's natural quality outstrips the acquired refinement, and it is pedantic when the acquired refinement outstrips his natural quality. Thus, only a good balance of natural quality and refinement will make a genius." Okay, we end. This episode, and thank you for being with me. And next episode, we are going to continue to learn the self cultivation. Why is that so important? What is the difficult part of self cultivation? So see you.